Did you know that Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm has a podcast and that we go live every week with a lineup of shows on BND TV? Head over to our YouTube channel today and subscribe for the latest in real estate, entertainment, education, and information. Here's what you missed last week. Always ready for action, Rick. Let's go. Let's do it. Question number one is this. Coach Mike, how do I prepare for the new year as a real estate agent? Mm, okay. Um, I think that's an excellent question. You know, the first thing that I really want to point out, Rick, mm -hmm. is the fact that they recognize the value in preparing yes. for the new year. Yes. Yes. Right? There's a number of us that, and I ain't going to say us because I prepare. There's a number of people <laughs> mm -hmm. that do not prepare, right? They're just kind of going by the seat of their pants. And what I found my 18 years being in business is that that is not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, one of the things that we've learned in NLP, and that stands for Neuro Linguistics Programming, and as a practitioner of that, which is what a lot of our coaching is based in, well, what they teach us is that you get what you focus on so focus on what you want right mm -hmm. and uh, i'll say it again you get what you focus on so focus on what you want so when it comes to preparing for the new year that's a big aspect of it is identifying what it what is it that you want over the next 12 months you know when january 1 gets here what is what is the vision for what you want to achieve and the outcome that you want to have over those 12 months so now that's you beginning to identify what it is that you want and beginning to now um, command your focus to begin to go towards that so that's a big piece right there that question just the question itself of how do i prepare for the new year that right there is the first step recognizing that you must prepare that it's important that you do that you All know, right. one of, oh, go, go ahead, Coach Mike. No, one of the great things about um, the Brooks and Davis real estate firm education platform is that we have tools that agents can take advantage of as far as preparing their real estate business plan. So could you just speak to our audience, A, about a real estate business plan for those who may not know that a business plan is part of a professional realtors um, annual preparation? And could you also talk about how Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm's education platform provides those new agents, those tenured agents, an opportunity to learn more and how to implement that type of plan? No, absolutely, Rick. And, you know, one of the things that we encourage our agents to do at Brooks and Davis is it, it needs to be more than just once a year. Like you need to mm -hmm. assess and plan uh, more than just once a year. Uh, there's a great book i can't recall off the top of my head who the author is but it's called the 12 week year right and the concept around the 12 week year is instead of making annual goals or outcomes make 90 day goals and outcomes and then you plan them right you take a year right and say hey this is what i want to accomplish over the next 12 months and then you condense that into a into three months and ask yourself what would need to happen for me to achieve this in 90 days. And then mm. what it's gonna do is it's gonna force you to get extreme on your plan and your execution. And that's what it's gonna force you to do. And that's something that we subscribe to at Brooks and Davis is do that, set 90 day goals, and then set a plan around that 90 day goal. And then you look at your plan once a week and then you plan your day around what you set out for that week, right? So now you've gone from a planning once a year, which is what a lot of people, if they do it, they do it once. Mm -hmm. You go from looking at your plan once a week, I mean, once a year, 
to every 90 days and then every week within that 90 days and then every day within that week. So now imagine how many times you've looked at that blueprint, right? Uh, be, you know, we're in real estate, Rick. So think about it. When a person is building a house, that builder, when he looks at that blueprint, he's literally looking at that blueprint multiple times an hour. He's going back to that blueprint to ensure that it's being built according to the metrics. Well, that's the same thing with, with us as business people. We need to be looking at our blueprint more, right? You know, we wonder why the house, you know, the house's frame is all jacked up or the walls is tilted or, you know, that room is not in the right place when it comes to our building is because you weren't looking at the plan as much as you needed to. And that's mm -hmm. why things are out of order. Things are out of place. So at Brooks and Davis, we really promote that. You know, one of the things that we do, especially in the first quarter of next year, is we're going to have a business planning um, training that we typically do. We typically do a vision board because vision and being able to internally and externally see in your future and what it is that you're wanting to achieve is very important. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned and I, you know, again, getting that master certification, there's a technique called time techniques where we can actually take a goal or an outcome and we can literally place it in your future, uh, on oh. your future timeline, right? All of this stuff works. And, you know, these are things that we're that we're utilizing at Brooks and Davis to enhance people's results that they're getting in their business. Anyway, what real estate topic we got for the people today? The importance of good real estate photos. Oh, wow. Yes. Is, is that important? Very important. It's the first impression that the buyers usually see, especially mm. if they're online. Mm. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. A picture can... It's worth a thousand words? No, I wasn't going to say that. Oh, okay. Your predictions are off, sir. That is what people say, though. That's what they say. But it's, I mean, it could be somewhat true. Yeah. But that's not what I was going to say. Okay. The picture can really draw the client and set expectations. Mm. Now, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Why, why, why so? I got excellent at taking some pictures. <laughs> so I, and I've been told that, hey, you tricked me. <laughs> how, how, do, how do I trick you? This don't look nothing like those pictures. Well, they may have a point though, Margaret, <laughs> the, because the point of the pictures is to do what? It's to draw you to the property. To get them to want to go look at it. Yes. So don't be drawing me into something that ain't what it looked like on these pictures. And that's why I have to explain. No. See, this home can too look like those pictures. No. You just need some light. I Hold just on. I just need a, a, some more lighting. Then people that got in their car, so, mm -hmm. then drove to that property, mm -hmm. and they like, this, yeah. this ain't. It's the same house, but I just took fabulous pictures. Mm, 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 mm. So, yeah, so I can say it's a blessing and a curse. So what it sounds like you're saying, Margaret, is <laughs> it is important. Yeah, it's very important. Very important to have good real estate photos, but make sure the property lined up with the photos. That's why people well, need to. That's why people need to stage. Like I believe people should stay stage their house. Yes, yeah, staging. I mean, yeah. Cause think about it. Yeah. Let's talk about virtual staging. Okay. So on the picture, I see all this beautiful furniture in there. And I'm like, man, look at the possibilities. And then I go into the house, and it's like empty. And I'm like, what is going on? It got you to the house now. We're not. We're not. You know looking for houses to buy furniture i need to fall in love with the property so then I so buy that's it. what the the virtual station did now all virtual stages aren't created equal because some of it look like paper like this this Carbo is box. a cartoon <laughs> and then some of them like you can hardly tell it's like this is this virtual reality mm. so you need to make sure your virtual staging is is on point i feel that. but if it draws the people to the property it's on the agent to be like, hey, let me tell you what it is. I know it don't look like what you thought you saw. But I got But you. let me tell you what you can do with this. Let me, let me give them the vision. Huh, yeah, honey? give them the vision. Give me the vision. Give them the vision. And, and, and just remind them, hey, you're not buying a house to, to you know, work around your furniture. <laughs> it, this is not what real estate is for. It's not for that. It's for your yes. change, quality of life. Yes, because it's transforming. Change. Absolutely. This year, you know, it's this. One year might be location, location, location. Yeah. So yeah. So you 
deflect. Yeah, the pictures get you there. But don't take <laughs> crappy pictures either. Yeah, you can't do that because then ain't nobody going to go yeah, to the Yeah, they won't look at it and it's like, man, you could have the best house, but mm-hmm. man, I just didn't have enough lighting in my picture. Or yeah. I should have had this plant positioned over that here. That is important though, man, because you could. There's a lot of agents that do have really nice properties and they're not positioning yeah, the them well are- digitally. Right you got to do better. Yes. But that's cool because, you know, tomorrow we're bringing in a group. We're going to talk more detail about it a little later, but they're going to be talking about premium cinematic property view video. Premium cinematic property video. You act like that's a tongue twister. Hey, man. Hey, man. It's, it's not. That's what it is, though. <laughs> see, 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 see what you did? See what you did? <laughs> what did I do? See what you did. Premium cinematic property video. We'll talk about that more about okay. what we're doing tomorrow. All right. So um, what's next? Real estate gone wild. You got a story? For- I thought I did it. You went to preview too. So that's what's up. Okay. Yeah. You know, one of the cool <laughs> things, Larry, is that... Um, you mentioned about Miss Robinson's IG handling that you had known her since the time she made the leap. So I want to ask you, Miss Robinson, could you just share with our audience about the motivation behind your Instagram handle? Yeah, and what absolutely. were some of the things that came from it? Yeah, so I get a lot of questions about that actually, because um, you know, a lot of people we have like have names like something real estate, Houston Realtor, or whatever, because people mm-hmm. can find you. Um, but for me, it was very important to stick to stick to my journey, to stick to like what um, identifies me and my journey. And that's what I've tried to convey over social media. So um, I just leave came from whenever I was, I quit my job, everybody was asking like, Ty, what are you doing now? And I was like, I just leaping, you know? And so it's it's about taking a leap of faith. And, you know, the way I was raised, it's like, all you need is a mustard side, a mustard seed size faith you know and i that's where it came from i took my leap i was taking a leap of faith um to follow my dreams to bet on myself and so yeah that's that's kind of the story behind it you know one of the things that all successful entrepreneurs have as a base for their business is a community service or activist stand for activist stance so could you just share a little bit with our audience about some of the things that you do in the community some of the boards you serve on and the type of activities that you have going in towards the end of this year yeah so i'm so very thankful to have been able to be a part of um, ypn this is my second second year i believe and so um a big part of of that committee is like community service and so this year i got to be the community service chair and so we did a very successful backpack drive we did rebuild in houston um we did a blood drive with um the blood bank and our last event of the year is the Hartsville Elementary, which they've been doing for forever, but it's yeah. such a rewarding um, community service effort because you get to see all the kids and they get to meet Santa and they're struggling to carry their gifts <laughs> out the cafeteria. <laughs> it's so hey, cute. But, it um, is. It's, it's amazing. It's, it you is. know, and I got to add on to it because I've had an opportunity to participate. And actually, I was one, I was Santa Claus one year for Hartfield. And so that was an exciting experience. But what I love to say, YPN does such an amazing job at finding ways to give back. And so you being a part of that chair is not surprised me that the organization has continued to grow and flourish with you being in, in that area of it. But they, they, uh, one thing about our association, they find ways to make sure that we are, are, are also giving back and being visible in the communities. And so that consistency is beautiful to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so fulfilling. I, I'm I'm honored to be a part of it and yeah. honored to, you know, be serving my community. You know, Ty, another thing that I, I that I want you to kind of for those realtors that are in our industry that are not on, on, on active uh, advisory boards or that are not participating, what do you feel like they, they, they may be missing out on? Because, you know, I've done it and I totally have had an opportunity to be just like you in your seat and be super excited about the things. What do you think those that are not participating, what are they missing? What are they, what are your thoughts? Oh, that's such a great question. One of my, um, another person asked me that like, hey, he, he's new. And he was like, I haven't really quite like understood the value of yeah. these different committees yet. And 
I'll, I'll give one example. So yeah. I remember when I first um, joined, um, we were at a happy hour and I was the same way. Like I was still weird about when stuff opened back up after COVID. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to be outside yet. <laughs> yeah. um, but I remember sitting at a happy hour and this um, this young lady was talking about I was I was still in a place of doing everything myself. Mm -hmm. I was typing up my contract, showing uh, 20 houses and, you know, trying to schedule showings and all of this. And I was like, so at what point do you get a transaction coordinator? And she was mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, like you get a transaction coordinator. And when you're like just at four million in production. And I was like, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, I didn't know that there was like best practices around like when you should bring in that help, when you should start, mm -hmm. you know, leveraging other people or outsourcing certain things so you could be more efficient. So mm -hmm. if I would not have been in those groups with other people that, you know, were doing a volume and, and figuring out cheat codes in the business, then mm -hmm. I would have never learned that. And so now I have an amazing transaction coordinator and I just feel like, Woo, just the yeah. just a big weight lifted off of me knowing that I see the emails coming through that she's following up on the files and everything is like just flowing, you know. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, I think that things like that, like little best practices, yeah. um, things that you don't you can't just Google, but you yeah. learn from other people in the business. And I think at the very least, that's enough for people to get involved because you're gonna learn from other people. Um, right. things that you can't that you won't learn in real estate school right no doubt about it i totally agree and that's that's one of the things like you said just sitting in the room having a general conversation and then that led to an opportunity for you to expand and get more time freedom and i think a lot of times when people look at the advisory boards and service they looking at the sacrifice that, that that they're losing on productivity and that's not the case that comes back hand over fist with a general conversation that you didn't even know that you needed at that time or that was going to give you the answer and the results that you got so that's amazing continue to do those amazing things oh not only that but while i got everybody's attention on what you're doing shout out to you winning uh the what is it the 40 under 40 award right for, uh, for top 20 uh, under 40. top mm -hmm. 20 under 40. look i should know the name of it right, because you won it. <laughs> <laughs> But this, this is another thing about our association, though, that's so beautiful. They find ways to keep those of us that are doing this business actively and being successful at it in a in a role of honoring you and respectfully honoring you. Because listen, it's all over social media, all of the amazing things that you're doing. But listen, that runway down the, the red carpet. Come on now. I'm just saying. <laughs> You know, because they want you to be like, I was like, you know, I'm going to own this red carpet. Yes. Miss yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robinson, did, did. for those. National Association of Real Estate Brokers, still championing democracy and housing to this day. Founded in 1947 in Tampa, Florida. Um, it's an organization that's near and dear to my heart as a black real estate professional for why it was founded, right? It was founded during a time where there wasn't any democracy, there wasn't any fairness when it came to African Americans and blacks in America. You know, we weren't allowed the, the certain rights that any citizen of a country should be able, should be allowed, right? We're talking about real estate here in Black and Real Estate because that's our focus. But the reality is, is that there was not democracy as it related to education, as it related to finance, as it related to work. Like there was so many discriminations as it related to voting, just basic rights that any citizen should have, right? And around that time, Booker T. Washington, one of the leaderships of, leaders of our community, was forming these organizations through the National Business League that was there to champion and to be an advocate uh, for the social ills of the country as it related to black people. And during that time, NARAB was founded, founded in Tampa, Florida. And for any real estate professional that's black, you gotta be a part of this organization. You know, to be candid with you, I've been in real estate for nearly 20 years. And I didn't find out about NARAB until close to 10 years in this business. And there's many of you out there that don't know that there's an African-American trade association that was formed to help us get more black people in the homes. A lot of you all don't know about it just like I didn't know about it. 
But guess what I'm going to do? From the time that I found out about NARAB on as long as I'm in this business, I'm going to be making people know. Black professionals, whether you're a broker, whether you're just a, maybe you're a realtor, you're just licensed, or, but you're in mortgage, title, insurance, uh, inspector, appraisal, land development, property management. You know, we have black people in all of those portions of real estate. And all of those black real estate professionals, we all need to be a part of NARAB. Because when we have a united front, that's how a lot of the legislation was passed that helped black people. When we talk about the Civil Rights Act of 1968, when we talk about the fair housing uh, laws that were passed, federally, fed federal laws being passed with the help of NARAB since 1947. But then you have other local laws in the state of California, in the state of Georgia, that were passed because of the united front that was being able to be presented by black professionals to help pass this uh, legislation. That social activism, that spirit of the social activists is what's going to be needed to get more black people in the home. So as a black professional in real estate, you need to go to NARAB.com. You need to watch the history of it. You need to uh, look into whatever your local market is. I'm here in Houston. So if you're here in Houston with me, you definitely need to get connected with the Houston Black Real Estate Association so we can get you plugged in. You need to get connected with the State Association. You need to go to a national conference so you can engage with black professionals about the business of getting black people in the homes throughout the United States. You need to take part in it because at the end of the day, as black real estate professionals, we have to get committed to continue to grow, right? To continue to get more skilled, get more savvy, get more creative, to help our people get into properties. And we have to continue to commit to contribute. And what does that mean? Willing to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, because no other community is gonna do it for us, for our community, nobody's gonna do it. So we gotta do it. Our black love has to be so strong for our own, that we're gonna do whatever it takes in our skill set to get more black people in the home. Start, go to NARAB.com, learn about the organization so you can get in the fight with us. I promise you, it's gonna be well worth your time, energy, and effort. Let's go, people.